Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to improve our geometry skills for SAT, GRE, or GMAT, whichever exam you're preparing for. Today is our lesson number six. Day number six. Today we'll talk about the concept of Pythagor Pythagorean theorem. What is the Pythagorean theorem? As soon as I ask that question to kids, what is the Pythagorean theorem? They immediately, like a bunch of parrots, will inform me c squared equals a squared plus b squared. But if you ask them to articulate it, what exactly does the Pythagorean theorem say? What does it mean a squared plus b squared equals c squared? What the hell does it mean? You must articulate the concept behind it and they cannot do it. I want to make sure that you can, that you are able to articulate properly, properly, the can the concept behind the Pythagorean theorem. So here we go. What the Pythagorean theorem says is that if you have a right angle triangle in any right angle triangle in any right angle triangle, the square of the side facing the right angle must equal the sum of the squares of the other two sides. That's what he said. This, Py this guy Pythagoria, Py Pythagoras, he did not wake up one day announcing to the whole village, hey guys, c squared equals a squared plus b squared. People would turn to him and say, what the hell? What does it mean? You must articulate the concept behind it. What he said is that if you have a right angle triangle, if you have a right angle triangle, then the side, then the side facing the right angle, this is your right angle, the side facing the right angle is this side, let's call this thing uh, A, B, C, the side facing the right angle, which is this side, this side, equals, the square of that side would equal the sum of the squares of the other two sides. For example, if I were to call this side X, this side Y, and this side Z, what the Pythagorean theorem says is that, the square of the side facing the right angle, which is this side here, z squared, the square of this side must equal the sum of the squares of the other two sides. The square of this side and the square of that side. Well, there is your Pythagorean theorem. And for those of you at this point who are completely freaked out and, oh my god, z squared equals x squared plus y squared, what the hell does this guy think? Where does he come from? It's the same thing. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. It's just the convention dictates here. Okay, okay, I'm going to actually spell it out. So I'm going to spell out everything so that so that you calm down. Okay, I'm going to spell it out. But the convention dictates. that we label the three sides as A, B and C. C being the longest side, namely Hypotenuse. It's just a convention. What does convention mean? Let's digress for a second. Convention. Digress. 
What does it mean to digress? It means to go off a topic. To go off a topic means to digress. If you want to learn these words, digress and convention, just type in Kishwani Prep dash vocab dash day 46. Then you will learn the word convention along with a whole bunch of other useful words for the SAT, GRE and GMAT. It doesn't hurt to improve your vocabulary at the same time. Convention means tradition. We could call this thing X, Y and Z. There is nothing wrong with it. It's, it's still, it is still a Pythagorean theorem. This is still a Pythagorean theorem. It's the exact same thing. It's just that this side instead of calling C, I'm calling it Z. But the convention dictates that we call the three sides A, B and C. C being the largest side. So Z is traditionally called C. And here, it doesn't matter which one you call A. I could call this A and this, this B. Or we could call this one uh, A and this one B. It doesn't matter. Why doesn't it matter? It doesn't matter because they are being added. It, uh, whether, you call, whether it's A squared plus B squared or B squared plus A squared, it doesn't matter. The order is not going to matter because they are being added. So here it doesn't matter which side you call A and which side you call B. Again, I'm going to... I'm going to observe the convention and the convention dictates that if I put this x here then the thing that logically goes with the, with the x is an alphabetical order would be a, a, b and c. But it's just a convention. So if you're going to sit there and say go around a squared plus b squared equals c squared, as I said it has absolutely no meaning whatsoever. You must spell out what this a, b and c are. c is the hypotenuse. So what you're telling me is that the square of the hypotenuse equals the sum of the squares of the other two sides. One more time, I'm going to say slowly. Square of the hypotenuse, what the Pythagorean theorem says is that if you have a right angle triangle and it only applies to the right angle triangle, it does not apply to any other triangle. The triangle must have a 90 degree angle in it. So if you have such a tri triangle with the 90 degrees in it, then in that case, what it says is that the square of the hypotenuse, and hypotenuse is just a name that we have given to the side facing the right angle, so that we don't have to keep saying the side facing the right angle, the side facing the right angle, the side facing the right angle. We have given it a name. We call it hypotenuse. Hypotenuse means the side that faces the largest angle, and the side that faces the largest angle, 90 degrees, is also going to be the largest side. So what the Pythagorean theorem says is that the square of the largest side, the square of the hypotenuse, must equal the sum of the square of the other two sides. Also notice, okay, keep in mind that you should read this, you should say sum of the squares and not, and not, where can I put it, let's put it at the bottom, and not square of the sum. This is too low, I'm not going to, I don't want to put it down there. Perhaps you can still read it. Square of the sum would be you take the sum a plus b and you square it. That is not what it says. It's not the it's not the square of the sum. It is not the square of the sum. It is sum of the squares. You must take the squares first and then take the sum of the two. Those two are two different quantities. So that's it. That's your Pythagorean theorem. Let's do an example, shall we? Let's do an example. Let's give this the quantity some. This, let's give these x, y, and z some numbers so we can so we can do some fun stuff. Let's pretend that z equals 13. And let's pretend that x equals 5. Let's figure out y. Shall we? Let's figure out y. So I'm going to erase the top part because we need the room. Pythagorean theorem says in, in any right angled triangle, in any right angled is hyphenated, right angled triangle, I was lazy so I just put a triangle there, the square of the side facing the right angle, the square of the side facing the right angle must equal the sum, the sum of the squares of the other two sides. And that's how you must say it. That's how you must articulate it. Otherwise, the rest of the stuff that you keep going around saying is just mumbo jumbo. It has, as I said before, it has absolutely no meaning because if you go around saying a squared plus b squared equals c squared, 
But I say, what the hell does it mean? I, I, for, for all I know, it could be something like this. For one thing, it's not even a right angle triangle. Secondly, even if it were a right angle triangle, I do not know what you mean by a squared plus b squared equals c squared. It could be like this. Does this, in this case, if I were to call the hypotenuse a and this side b and this side c, would it still apply? Would it still be, would it still be true that a squared plus b squared equals c squared? Of course not. Because c is supposed to be the hypotenuse. So this, 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 this is nonsense. I cannot read your mind. I don't know what you mean by a, b, and c. You must spell it out. You must say that the square of the hypotenuse must equal the sum of the squares of the other two sides. And that's how you say I figure out theorem. Let's, let's figure out this part here. So here we have x squared plus your y squared equals the hypotenuse squared. Hypotenuse is 13 squared. Y squared, we do not know. X is 5. Let's subtract 5 squared from both sides. So we get Y squared equals 13 squared. And 13 squared is 169. You must you must, I, I'm going to digress now big time, I'm going to digress right now, big time, you must know your squares. You must know your squares by heart. I'm not going to actually stop, I was going to stop right now and do them right now. I changed my mind, I'm not going to do them right now, I'm going to do them later in a different, different video. I'm just making a note to myself. I'm going to put together uh, five or ten uh, videos about arithmetic. I, I just decided on it. I'm going to also put together five or ten vi videos on the basic concept of arithmetic, such as ratios and proportions and percentages and uh, squares of numbers. Uh, and I'll, I'll put those together. And at that time, we'll talk about the squares. You must know what 13 squared is. 13 squared is 169 minus 5 squared, which is 25. And that gives me 4. 4 and 1, your y squared is 144. That tells me that y must equal 12 because 12 times 12 is 144. 144, which is 12 squared. So if y squared equals 12 squared, y must equal 12. There you go. There you go. So here, the missing number was 12. Now at this point, what I want you to do is something that you, if you have not done it at all in your life, I want you to sit down and convince yourself of a Pythagorean theorem. You're going to convince yourself that this thing actually does make sense. What I want you to do is this. What I want you to do is take a one foot long ruler, a 12 inch long ruler, and draw a line 12 inch long on a piece of paper. Very nicely, very straight. Okay, It's very important that it's straight. It has to be 90 degrees to the, from the base. And then draw a 5 inch long line this way. And with the ruler, measure it carefully. Measure it from this point to that point. And you will see that if you did a good job of drawing it, you will see that this distance is exactly 13 inches. And that's what Pythagorean theorem is. It allows you to figure out a missing side and a right angle triangle if you know two sides. It doesn't matter which two sides know, you know. As long as you know two sides of a right angle triangle, you can figure out the third side by using this concept called Pythagorean theorem. All right. I'll see you tomorrow. Let's see what I have in store for tomorrow, day number seven. Any interesting topic? Oh, what do you know? Actually, tomorrow we'll talk about a 3-4-5 triangle. A 3-4-5 triangle, which is a right angle triangle, but it's a very special kind of right angle triangle. We'll talk about that triangle tomorrow. Okay? If you wish to get hold of me for personal private tutoring, either face to face or over the internet via Skype for SAT, GRE, GMAT, or statistics, algebra, geometry, you can go to any of these website addresses that you see there and send me an email. Or you can go to keshwaniprep.com and you can get, get hold of me from there as well. Okay? Thanks.